Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Recovery Rock. Haven't done a video in a while. Just felt like doing one out of the blue randomly. I got a year of clean and, and sober. Today is November 8th, 2021. And um, this is uh, my story for the last year. That's what I'm going to speak about a whole year in about 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, after the, after battling you know, a decade and a half of uh, addiction. Um, I finally was able to get myself clean and keep myself clean for the longest period of time off of weed that I've had since I tried it, you know, a year and a, and a week. Um, the longest time off of dope since I've tried the opiates, the longest time I've been off of the opiates, which is now 13 months. Um, the longest time off of alcohol, everything. And, um, you know, since I tried all that shit, the longest I've been off of cigarettes since I've tried cigarettes. And, you know, I'm a survivor. I survived a lot of shit, man. A lot of people I know aren't as fortunate that have died. I've seen people get um, brain damage, all kinds of shit. So... <clears throat> This is, this is what I've learned. Um, you know, again, I've, I've told my story on this channel before, but same, you know, where everybody has a story, how they got into addiction, I, you know, through the last 15 years, a lot of trial and error, I've learned a lot. But um, what's most important is um, to stay active in your recovery. And there's a program designed to that. It's the 12 Steps program, the Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm somewhat in the process of going through the steps myself, but even just going to the fellowship, um, listening, going to meetings consistently has been keeping me clean and sober. Um, you know, so I'm gonna speak about the last year. In before October, when my daughter got taken away, that's when I threw in the towel. Again, methadone, gabapentin, Kalanapin, Adderall, um, weed, um, dope, crack, you name it. And I quit cold turkey. I went to a detox. I went cold turkey three days, refused treatment. I mean, not treatment. I refused medication. Um, and I was deathly sick. And they told me that the methadone would be in my system. 30 days, I was going to feel like that. I said, fuck no. I went to, uh, I got out and on the way home, I, an Uber, I clicked an additional stop to Lawrence, hand-to-hand -hand transaction. As soon as I got it, sniffing it right in the back seat in front of the Uber driver. No respect. <clears throat> oh, that's how fucked up I was. And um, I did dope for like two, three more weeks until October 4th. I went back into detox. And again, I quit everything. And that's the last time I did dope, October 4th. Um, so I've been off of the dope since October 5th, but I got out, you know, a week of treatment. Um, and I got home and I was still deathly sick, man. And I was trying to get off of my Klonopin and Gabapentin. I was smoking weed. You know, I was, I had severe withdrawal symptoms. Um, the second worst detox in my life, for sure. The first was when I did... Um, what you call it? Not, not knocking, not, not Vivitrol, not a day clean. And, uh, that fucked me up big time. But this one was really, really bad too. And, um, you know, in about two weeks, I got all my pills stolen from me. So that's when I stopped that. I just said, I'm all done. And I smoked weed until November 1st. So since November 2nd, I've been clean and sober. What happened then was after a few weeks, okay, so this was, you know, coming on the winter, I do tree and landscaping. Um, so I was collecting unemployment at the time It's the coronavirus. I'm brand new to being sober yet again. So I'm like, I'm just gonna get my mind right. Let me um, have my unemployment pay for the bills. And I dived into the AA program, you know? I, I created a network of people and this is how the program helped me even from the very start. There's other people in the same 
damn boat is you. No matter where you are, if you have a day queen, a week queen, a month, a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years, people have been there. There's other people in the same shoes as you. Different story, but they've been there. And it's, it was good for me to hear, oh, other people are going through the same shit. And this is how they're going through it. So as how the program works is collectively you see how everybody else is doing it too. And you know, you have your own experience, which you share and people give you feedback and, and it just, it, it works. It's like recovery. I mean, it's like uh, counseling. Um, it's all that stuff. Um, so... Damn, I didn't mean to shut that off. So, so that's what I did. I just dived right into the AA program. And, um, you know, I'm slowly learning to take care of myself again. Um, and I got real comfortable over the winter. You know, I didn't have much responsibilities. Um, I wasn't working, uh, didn't, wasn't seeing the kids nearly as much as I wanted to. Um, but I just knew I had to get my mind right and I relearned how to take care of myself. I mean, I got comfortable cooking breakfast, taking my time, cooking breakfast. I'm on a budget now because I don't have money, so I'm going food shopping, cooking nice food for myself. Um, you know, cooking for myself, lighting the incense in the morning. Uh, going on the Zoom meetings, drinking coffee, you know, and, you know, exercising. I was really taking care of myself. And that's what I did, you know, seeing the kids. I got comfortable with it. I was happy. And um, then come the spring, you know, I was on that little pink cloud. Like, yeah, I got myself clean and sober. Um, and I, I'm still happy for it, but the more the time went by, the more I realized I have, I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of catching up to do. I've done a lot of damage. There's a whole lot of work to do. And, um, you know, come spring, now I'm getting back to work. The unemployment ended. Plus it's the spring, my time of the season to get back to work anyways. And, um, you know, I'm growing in life and I realized Part of my problem was I have to learn to live life without in controlling my emotions at the same time. So I'm not running to a drink, a drug, all that shit, or lashing out on people. Um, and the program has helped me do that too. The AA program, it's initially kept me clean and sober and it still does, but it also goes deeper than that. It's taught me how to, you know, it teaches you principles and, and the tools um, and the trick is to apply those to the rest of your life. It's real easy to stay clean and sober when you're locked up, when you're, um, and, you know, it's real easy to talk recovery when you're in AA meetings and whatnot with other people that totally understand. It's real easy to stay clean and sober when you're in a rehab facility, when you're in a halfway house, um, it, but it's about applying these principles and using these tools for the rest of your life, uh, you know, other parts of your life. So, you know, the, the one thing I've done is, like I said before, the consistency is key to recovery. Stay active in your recovery. It's... You know, it's the only thing that I've done right and I've been able to stay clean and sober because of it. It's a small price to pay in, in the balance too. So when I wasn't seeing, you know, early spring, I didn't have my kids as much. I was able to dive into work and um, I grew real quickly because I put a lot of my time and energy into um, into working and, I've, and I'm doing great, you know? I really am. Uh, I'm a salesman, I work for a tree company, I'm a great fit, my boss has known me forever, taking on side jobs, doing great, somebody without a license. And, um, you know, then uh, now my responsibilities are picking up, I'm working, uh, you know, my, 
my my priorities are my recovery, my children, my work in that order. And when I start to get responsibilities for my children back, that's my priority. I have to cut down on my work. You know, I have to sacrifice making money because these are my priorities, my responsibilities. And how do I say this? Um, so th that's just what happened. I'm getting my kids back. Um, and just in the last, here's the, here, here are the gifts of sobriety. In the last two, two day, to this day, November 8th, in the last one, two, was it two weeks or three weeks ago? I think it was, I think it was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I had court in Woburn District. Um, this is for the OUI, my second OUI, and they dismissed the charge. I'm pretty sure, all right, I could go on and do a whole episode on this. Cops fucked me up, um, but that's kind of irrelevant. They, I beat it on a technicality, long story short. I was guilty of sin. I was operating on the influence, but they didn't have the right, before they arrested me, they did an inventory on my vehicle and they went through my glove box and they, that's a gray area, but the judge overruled that. But they, so they say in the police report that they use these prescriptions they found and they searched my vehicle for inventory purposes, but on the inventory report, they didn't put that. Not only did they put, not put my prescription drugs on the inventory, but they used that as evidence. They didn't have the right to search my vehicle for evidence. And if they searched it for inventory, they should. They didn't have the right to count my pills, and this was all in the police report. So, Also, I think the judge took into consideration that I've been clean and sober for years. The very, so I got my OUI dismissed. God bless. The next day, um, they they give me, a judge writes me a letter that it's in the best interest of my kid that I get full custody. On October 30th, I got full custody of my daughter. You know, these are all things that, A, I keep myself clean and sober, and B, I try my absolute hardest and everything. Like, I, my pain has been a huge, big motivation, my, the love for my kid. I, you know, I wasted a lot of time. I know I have potential and I can, I'm a good person and I can do great things in my life. It's just, I got this problem. So treating this problem is number one. And once I do that, everything else falls into place. But there's other things too. You have to work hard at everything you do in life. And, um, you know, we're not supposed to act on emotion, okay? Now this, for someone like me, is easier said than done. The stronger my emotions are, the harder it is to control. So it's important. Um, at times I have to step back and that's where you find humility, you know? And it's like the serenity, accept the things I cannot change and change the thing god give me serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference my situation with my daughter okay she got taken away from me i have to accept that there's two parts of that i have to accept only it is what it is today okay i can't change it overnight and i know that i had to really really figure this out i have to accept that it is what it is today I can change that only through my actions. I have to try my absolute hardest every day. And I knew also, I might not get the results that I want, okay? But at least I can say I tried my absolute hardest, and I did. And, um, you know, a lot of variables, but, but, you know, the end result, I have custody of my daughter, and that's a huge blessing to me. That's what I believe is in the best interest of my kid too. So it goes in the judge, DCF. And um, so yeah, so that's where I'm at today. Um, where I'm at today, so I just got custody of my daughter. And again, when things get overwhelming and difficult, okay, 
I have to bring it back to the basics. These are all things I'm learning. I have to bring it back to the basics. What they say in the program, you know, keep it in the day, one day at a time. I have to remember that. I can get overwhelmed and my mind goes everywhere. No, just all I can do is what I can do today. Let's just keep it in the day. And then reset and remember my priorities, my recovery. Keep that on the forefront. My kids and my work. And, um, you know, life gets difficult. Um, the winter's right around the corner. I got a call the other day to take on a big side job. I can't do it. I just, no, I have three side jobs going on right now. A full-time job. I am new to being a full-time father. And um, the last thing I'll say is, and I have to have some free time too, okay? When my, when my schedule is completely booked, okay? Here's what happens. Thursday, just, today's Monday, just the other day, last Thursday, I'm buying a truck and the guy's supposed to pick me up and bring me to Boxford, Massachusetts. And he says, I'm at your house, he's in Boxford. The guy's 82 years old, awesome guy, but he, he forgot I lived in Woburn. Oh, I'm at your house in Boxford. Now I have to scramble to go to Boxford. Um, you know, it cuts into my whole day because my whole schedule is every minute I have something scheduled. And then um, I get my daughter after that. She, they say she said keep her home Friday. Okay, Friday I have a really important appointment. Of course my phone breaks, it gets messed up. On top of everything else I'm going through, I'm like, I, I have to slow my roll with everything. And, and that's why I'm saying I learn how to, I gotta, sometimes you gotta take a step back. Sometimes it's time to grow and it's uncomfortable. Sometimes you gotta, okay, I gotta chill out. Hope that made sense or help somebody. Thank you all. God bless you all. Um, if you're trying to, you know, get yourself clean and sober, there is help. It's your responsibility to find it. The risk help you have to try your absolute hardest just like everything else in life um if you want to support the channel support somebody in recovery it's a problem for individuals it's a problem for the community the country it's a huge problem for the whole world so uh, that's why you know again i survived alcoholism not everybody does so um i want i like to share what where i'm at you know what's helpful for me and um it's like therapeutical for myself and also i'm hoping i can help somebody else too so god bless